<laughs> so from Los Angeles, California, welcome to CG Society. I'm your host, Travis Borbo, and today we're going to be speaking with Emmanuel Shu, concept artist and designer. I'm really kind of excited about talking with Emmanuel with you today because one of the things that we don't get to do very often is talk about the um, established artists or, or the artists, you know, that's moved beyond just worrying about getting into the industry or worrying about what the next job is, but rather the artist has been in the industry and, you know, has some titles under their belt and really has a comfort level, you know, with what they're doing. Um, it was either that or we discussed your table tennis um, <laughs> national championship, uh, which either one of those could be a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah, no, the table tennis stuff is definitely a lot of fun that I try to include in a lot of my talks just to let people know that uh, you can uh, achieve anything. <laughs> yeah, and, and I mean, that's one of those hobbies that you picked up here just later in life, right? Like it's not something you've yeah, been doing. Before. Yeah, I picked it up when I was about, uh, you know, 40 and and I just wanted to see what I could make of it um, and yeah definitely late in life I was always into sports so uh, you know I didn't get a chance when I was young so I got a chance when I was later uh, in life and it's and it's also proven to me that uh, you know with enough practice you really can do anything so <laughs> what 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 draw what drew you to that were you just always a well, fan I of mean, I, you know or? I I had been injured before, uh, and, and which left me, you know, in a wheelchair. So uh, yeah. for the longest time, I didn't do any sports. So uh, you know, this was the one sport that I could pick up that I could actually play with able-bodied people. So I said, ah, hell with it, I'll just give it a shot, um, and I really liked it. So from that point, I just started practicing, you know, six days a week <laughs> uh, for roughly seven years before I made my first national team. So, yeah. Wow. So, and then I want to talk about your history a little, just because you have such a, a lengthy history and kind of a really interesting journey. You go, you know, back to Ron Cobb for hopefully some of the listeners listening in that Ron Cobb is and, and have respect for that in the industry. And you were right there with him. Do you want to share a little bit about that? Yes. So, you know, my first job was uh, in the multimedia era, uh, just starting out where they were just doing PC games. Uh, and I got a job at this place called Hypergolic Studios, which is co-owned by Ron Cobb. Uh, and I <laughs> I didn't really know who he was and, you know, like the this, this sort of heavy hitter that he was, you know, designer and all that. But Man, as uh, you know, as you spend time with him, and he's such a jolly guy. You know, you wouldn't. He's very humble. You wouldn't expect anything uh, different. He's just, you know, he. You go to lunch with him. He drinks a lot of wine. Comes back to the meetings. Falls asleep. <laughs> snores. <laughs> but as he's a co-owner, so nobody, <laughs> nobody can say anything. And I was just looking at him like, ooh. For those people listening in that don't know Ron Cobb, what are some of the projects he worked on just to give them a frame of reference? Um, he worked on, I think he did some versions for Star Wars. He did The Abyss. He did Aliens. Uh, he did design a lot of the vehicles. Uh, on Abyss, uh, he did, you know, all the submer he did the uh, uh, the submersible stuff, and 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 uh, he was telling us that a lot of his blueprints and designs uh, when they were making the actual set. Uh, a lot of the people who may uh, who were consulted said that this actually could be built uh, for real, um, and and for him to to patent it, <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, because he he thinks very design oriented, and you know he would uh, it's like that gun on that uh, in Aliens and in the in the on the uh, what, what do they call it, you know that the 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 thing that goes in to save them, and it's right. got that gun that comes down. He made very aggressive designs. I mean, everything he built looked like it could drive through a brick wall, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's – and then, you know, I was just saying that he was just such a – and he also such a pro prolific painter. He would paint with a pixel brush. Like, not the paintbrush, but the pixel. He would paint pixel by pixel. Um, <laughs> Some love. And when he zoomed out, we were all, like, just blown away. So it was pretty – it was pretty insane. So, yeah. <laughs> so it was fun work. 
<laughs> yeah, you went from working with Ron Cobb, and then where did you kind of, how did you end up where you are now? What are you doing right now for those of you that, uh, the users that are just joining? You know, what is it that you're spending your time on now? And, so uh, right now I'm, I'm, you know, I'm basically freelance doing, you know, illustrations and concept design uh, for, you know, various films and, uh, you know, just whatever I can pick up really. Uh, um, right now I'm on a Disney movie uh, that's ending, but I, I got a lot of different, uh, you know, the, when you're running the freelance life, you have a lot of different clients and overlaps and stuff like that. So right now it just happens to be one of those uh, overlap times. But uh, yeah, just doing mainly films right now. I finished a big stint on a game for about three, four months. So that was fun. Uh, so I kind of bounced back and forth, you know, whatever sounds interesting at this point. And freelance in the early days is a lot of feast and famine. Is that, you know, ha being in the industry as long as you've been in, do you still find yourself having to to juggle three or four projects at a time and then go a month without work? Is it, uh, um, what's that experience yeah, like at your level? Yeah, I think freelance uh, is, I mean, I, I'm relatively new to the freelance world. So I, I've, it's about my, about eight years. So, okay. you know, yeah, so not, you know, most of my, the beginning of my career for over 10 years has been in, in studio. Um, and coming out freelance was scary because I didn't know how this was going to be. And I, I know a lot of people, even seasoned people, uh, wonder, you know, if, you know, if you're an ILM or, uh, you know, if you work at Weta or, you know, if you've been at a studio for a while and you want to go freelance, a lot of people wonder what that's like. And for me, it's, it's been pretty much feast all the way through, uh, almost to a point where I have to program in some time now to just take time off because it's it's getting kind of crazy and it's it's like three four projects and I you know it gets to a point where it's really hard to juggle um, and I'm getting a point where I'm comfortable enough saying I want to pick the right project and not just have projects but the right one. And I think that's really important for most people to, I think a lot of people are like, well, I'm just happy if I get a job. But at some point you're gonna wanna really prioritize what kind of job you want. Be more selective. It, yeah, exactly, it's really important. But it's really hard to say no to something that's gonna be like, <laughs> you know, a long-term thing, you know, like five, six, eight months, but it's maybe not the right project. Well, you, you say, say no to that. <laughs> Yeah, you say that, but I mean, I want to pause there just for a moment because I, I think that, I think, you know, for people, once you're an established artist, once you've worked with a lot of people, if you've been at ILM for 10 years or you've been at ILM or Weta, you know, th those are among the few studios that have the luxury of comfort, in, in my opinion, of being able to stay for 10 years as an artist. And, and you get not necessarily lazy, but you get a level of comfort by being there. Um, and so, you know, one, it, it's pretty brave of you to be able to jump off into freelance. And I imagine for you more than someone else, it's even scarier in that sense. Um, but that being selective is important because once you've established those relationships, you also have the person on the other end who kind of has come to know your art, know your style, have an expectation of what you're going to deliver before even bringing you on. And there is not necessarily, I don't know if danger is the right word, but there's a danger with an established relationship for them to come to you and say, look, I'm, I'm doing project X and I, I really want you on. Right. And, you know, if you've got something to your left that, that you're a little bit more hungry for, maybe, maybe it's just that you want to try something new. Is there a danger to turning that down? Does somebody else fill a seat that becomes the, the loaded gun for that director or the loaded gun for that client? Um, leaving you hanging when you're jumping into the freelance world, or is that not a concern at all? Is it just chase what you're passionate about? Um, I mean, I, I would say, uh, yeah, there's some of that, but I, I would I would chase what you're passionate about. But, uh, you know, like for me, uh, when I jump freelance, you know, and you're always going to need help, um, you know, from somebody. And I didn't really have much of a choice because we were called into a meeting at Image Movers, uh, and they said, well, we're shutting down. So there's not a whole <laughs> not lot of choice. Your misery, but I, I, re I recall when that was going down with a lot of people, and that was one hell of a team at Image Movers, right? I yeah, mean, it was. I mean, we were like 40 strong concept 
guys. And, you know, I still remember in that meeting, there was a guy who had just left ILM to join that oh, day. Man. Oh, man. Oh, the day of the <laughs> meeting. And he, he basically, I think he got out of the meeting and texted ILM back and said, hey, maybe I need to come back. Oh, man. Um, it's definitely horrible. But, you know, the truth of it is, it, 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 it you know, we, it made me go freelance. Uh, and I got a lot of help from uh, George Hall at that point. And he, because you know, I asked him, I said, look, what, what is this freelance world? What, what is this all about? Because I had never freelanced. I had always been at, you know, Image Movers. I, and then before that, I was at the Orphanage. And then, I, and then I was at ILM. And, you know, it was like all these places were just like places where I was like two, three years at a time. So now can you not to jump in, but can you really quickly just for the younger users joining or, or people that are unaware um, break down, you know, image movers was a group of 40 ultra talented artists. But what were some of the projects and who were who are some of the key players in that team? for you? Uh, well, image movers was uh, image movers digital. Uh, we're doing uh, Christmas Carol. Uh, right. I mean, I got there at the tail end of Beowulf and then Christmas Carol and then Mars Needs Moms. Uh, so there was those those couple of movies that were in de development, uh, you know, and Christmas Carol was the main thing that I was doing, um, and and uh, and some of the heavy hitters. I mean, you know, Eric Tiemens was there, you know, Eric Tiemens, Brian Flora, uh, Doug Chang was heading up the whole thing. Uh, I was with Eddie. Uh, you know, there, there was just, just so many good people there that it, it so, was just. Like a team. It was, yeah, it was just like the dream team. Um, and, but it, you know, Darren Bacon, who's now at 343, uh, you know, just a lot of cool people too. I mean, we, our lunches were like, you know, most of the time it was like six to, at least six to like 12 people. <laughs> uh, hard to arrange, but every day at lunch we'd be like, hey, Kai's just go to lunch. And, you know, you got Eric, kind of a little bit more quiet, you know, kind of come <laughs> joins once in a while, you know. Me and Eddie are always the crew. Dave Hobbins, and, you know, it was just it was just a lot of fun, you know, and it was just so great to have known those guys. And the good the cool thing is when I went freelance, and this is something that nobody really talks about, is that, you know, I wondered if it was going to drive me. So so the image you have up now is Christmas Carol, um, but. Uh, my main thing uh, was, am I going to just bore myself to death at home? Am I going to, you know, because you're used to like a 40 plus person art department, you know, hustle and bustle. People are talking all of a sudden going from that to just being by yourself. Um, I was really scared that I couldn't handle it. So That's in the happened. end, sorry. Oh, no, go ahead. Um, so in the end, I, I, you know, me, Eddie, Dave, you know, whoever would jump on, we would just do Google Hangouts. Um, and Smart. make sure, you know, kind of critique, talk, just whatever. And the funny thing is, you know, eight years later, you know, like yesterday or Eddie, I just, we, we, you know, me, Eddie and Dave talk a lot, you know, almost on a daily basis on Google. And, you know, sometimes we just leave it on. <laughs> um, just, you know, needing that kind of a uh, network, you know, helps. Yeah. That's cool because when you're working alone and we, we just talked with Andre and we talked about some of the dangers of spending a lot of time in your own head and, you know, in the freelance world, there are no hours. You're, you're always on, but you're also, yeah. you know, for the most part alone. So having those tools, whether that be Google Hangouts or hearing that advice from somebody at your level, I think has a lot of value because, you know, burnout and depression are realistic dangers in this industry that, um, you know, don't affect everyone, but I definitely think there's a period of time for each artist where, you know, like a writer or any other creative industry, mus musicians, whatever it may be, um, to have to deal with that. So that's an excellent way of just jumping on with pals. I think Dave Hobbins that you're referring to for those listening, and I, I believe, you know, he just came off of Star Citizen, correct? Doing some ships. And oh, no, I mean, he's, he's been he went on Star Wars. And, yeah, you know, he's, he's, on, he's been on Star Wars for a while now. Uh, okay. Star Citizen was a, it was a couple years ago already. Um, Time yeah, flies, he's right? super talented vehicle guy that I just can't say enough of. But uh, yeah, I mean, he's, you know, and Eddie, you'll have, I think you're having him on tomorrow. Uh, yeah. He's super, you know, awesome. And it's just great to be able to just 
have that kind of connection to sort of a mini art department, if you will, you know, of people that, you know, if you have your, if, you know, and we always run into these, you know, oh, my painting, something's not working. Uh, what do you think, guys? Or we'll just show our work, you know, just to get some feedback, you know, because who else is going to do it, you know? Um, so well, and who do you trust? Yes, right? and people you trust, exactly, yeah. This is a nice piece here. Uh, and, you know, what, one of the things that I wanted to talk to you about as well is that, you know, you've gone from 10 years in the industry. You've really been around for a lot of the evolution of this industry. Um, so, you know, you've, you've watched the software and the tools develop. I, I'm, I want to get into a little bit later some of your pipeline, how much 3D, how much photo batching, how much, you know, what are some of the mm -hmm. new techniques you've picked up over the years. But I think it's also important to say you moved into freelance. And one of the things we don't hear about that often is the preparation for the, the second half or the, the later half. I don't know if that's the right way to put it. The second half of your career when you have the, uh, you have the accomplishments, you have the confidence, you're at a point with your skill that you're still learning, you're still evolving, but it's that time to re-energize yourself, reintroduce yourself to you know, the freelance world. Because you know, if you're at ILM for 10 years, you're an amazing artist working on amazing projects, but it's very easy to disappear within the body of ILM, right? Um, or, or any other studio um, to get comfortable and complacent because you're not looking for work, but we're very much in an environment right now where you have to remind people what you've done and you have to, to make sure that your name and your brand has stayed out there. So how do you prepare for the second half of your career? What are some of the things you're working on and doing and um, is there a preparation? Meaning that is well, it? Well, I, I think you know it's a it's a couple of things. I mean, if you're at a studio uh, for a long time like ILM and you're aiming to to leave because you want to hit freelance uh, or you want to just go into the next evolution of your career, which is you know like a little bit more, uh, you know, calling your own shots, you know. It, realistically speaking, as much as freelance allows you to do. Yeah, so I, I'm, you know, I'm at a point where I'm taking certain time to uh, further myself uh, in terms of the things that I want to do and also questioning myself uh, in terms of, well, do I, you know, what, what kind of jobs do I want to have in the future? You know, like I could just keep going the way I've been going and you'll get the same jobs, right? Same clients, same kind of job, same kind of request. Or if you as an artist want to change it up a little bit and say, hey, you know, I really want to get into more storytelling keyframes or I really want to get into characters or I really want whatever it is that you want to get into. Uh, for me personally, it's more storytelling, um, more character based. So, you know, I've done the environment thing for a long time now. So I feel like, okay, that knife is sharp, at least sharp enough that I think I need to go sharpen some other knives. Um, and so for me, uh, I want to get into more storytelling, more character-based stuff, and then I'll get to a point where I can do more personal work and then flood that, you know, into my portfolio so that my future clients will want to hire me for that. But that's something that takes time to do that you right. have to have the foresight to say, hey, I want that. Uh, because a lot of people, they just keep doing the same thing. And then it's just going to be like, you know, in the end, you know, they wonder why the client just keeps asking them to do the thing, you know, that they're known for, but they don't really want to do anymore. Um, That's a dangerous path, too, because no matter how good you are as an artist, if you're constantly doing the same things at even at a very high level, eventually it's going to date. It's going to it's going to look redundant. Well, yeah, it's it, 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 it just definitely has that. But the main most important thing is burnout because right. you're going to do the same thing over and over and over. And at some point, no matter how fun it was when it started, you're going to burn out. So right. you kind of have to give yourself a little breathing room by doing something different. Um, well, so I think you know valuable to hear because so many students as they should so many um, junior artists as they should uh, focus on the technique you know what software do I need what uh, you know what's your pipeline how much photo bashing how much 3d are you using and that knowledge is necessary right but I feel like it's like 20 30 percent of the total knowledge that enables you as an artist to have a long career so hearing someone like yourself say like look you know yeah if ZBrush is introduced if substance painter is introduced if you know, 3D Coat becomes a pipeline software, you know, you still have to deal with, 
you know, maybe you're doing well, maybe you're successful, but you still have to deal with how do you keep yourself fresh? How do you, how do you learn, like you said, storytelling? How do you get out of, not the rut of concept art, because man, it's a passion and it's amazing, but how do you pick up those other things without falling backwards in the, the thing that you excel at? Meaning, you know, how do you pick up on the story beats without you know losing the rendering skill that you've got here, the ability to, to knock out the stuff you're known for? Um, is, uh, go ahead. Yeah. No, and I, I want to, you know, like, I think the technique is the technique, you know, and always, you know, like once you get to a point where you're really proficient at the technique, yeah, sure, you can, you know, always look at other techniques, but ultimately, you know, what kind of message or image do you want, you know, to create, you know, and what that is, is going to dictate how you do it. Um, and you, you, you know, I think for most people starting out, they're always asking, well, what, you know, how, you know, because it's, it's, it's very important, you know, they, 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 they don't know, but I think that, uh, you know, once you get onto, you know, keep it simple, you know, but the main thing is, what do you want to say with it? You know, if, do you want to start telling stories? Do you have a story you want to tell, you know, like what, what is it that really rocks your boat? Because what's going to rock your boat is going to rock other people's boat. Um, so I think. That is really important, you know? Well, and, the, and you you mentioned something else too, which is a lot of, I think a lot of people coming up ask the questions because it's what they know to ask. So whether it be somebody who's coming up, let's, let's take two parts. Let's say for the student at school, at Art Center, Noman or Art Academy, wherever, for that student, what are some of the questions that they might not think to ask um, that you think would, you know, as an established artist that you think would be valuable. And then, you know, for the, for the artist who's been doing it for 15 years, what are some of the things that hopefully they're taking the time to think about and ask themselves as well? Or what are some things that you're asking yourself as well? Um, well, I think for, for, the, for the person, you know, like who's been at it for a while, I right. think for them, uh, I think a lot of times they need just need to ask that question is the thing. Because right. a lot of times they just get into the groove and that groove lasts for years and they don't yeah. realize why they feel the way they feel until the one day they go, oh, my goodness, I don't want to do this anymore. I just don't want to do this anymore. And they don't realize that, you know, they had already seen the signs and symptoms three, four years ago and they could have asked this question. But so the question for them a lot of times is to ask, you know, like, what do I want the next five years to be? Do I want to create the same exact thing I want to do? Do you want to do something different? And, you know, like, is there some tools I need to learn? I, I mean, I'm a big proponent of every artist, no matter how good you are, need to learn new tools and also to take some classes, right? Some, whatever that may be uh, to you. Uh, so last year, I, I basically took Craig Mullins painting class. I took it twice. Um, and it doesn't mean that I, from now on, everything I do is going to be painted, but it brought me to a certain awareness and opened my eyes to what I want to do next. And if I didn't do that, if I didn't take the time to do that, I would have never, I would have never been on that path. So I think a lot of people who are, you know, in the middle of the career or, you know, like have some experience at some point you need to ask those questions. Um, and you need think, to explore. Yeah, I think that's important because one of the things I think is it's harder to verbalize is uh, the things that you don't plan in your path that are just happenstance or opportunity. Meaning that you know you might have a reason for taking Craig Mullen's class, um, but the thing you take away from that may have nothing to do with that original reason, right? Putting yourself oh, in yeah. positions with that that change the course of your path. Um, I mean, there, it, you you could easily just. Take the, uh, for me, for example, you uh, take sure. the class and you could go walk away from it and go, you know what? I don't want to paint. Right. I actually want to do it this way. But if you didn't take the class, you wouldn't know that. Yeah. So I think a lot of times you kind of have to program in time because a lot of people say, well, I'm too busy. You know, like I, I talk to, you know, more, more senior artists and they're, oh, I'm busy. I got to this. Da, da, da. I say, yeah, you can you should learn the software. It's going to make your life easier. It'll open up your eyes. Oh, no, right. no, you know, I, I, you know, I've got this, that, and the other thing to do. I'm like, well, but, you know, and then two years later, they're still in that rut while you're moving away from it. And a good example is when I first uh, 
you know, I was a matte painter before I was a concept artist. But for the longest time, people were just looking at me as a matte painter. I had to blow my whole portfolio away, like matte painting portfolio, blow it away right. and rebuild it with concept art until somebody, until people saw me as a concept artist. So, you know, you have, you know, just because you want something, you have to also change how people perceive you. I mean, especially your clients. Because if they look at your work, you, all you do is character, nobody's going to ask you to do an environment. It's just not going to happen. Right. So no. I think you got to ask that question, you know, at whatever stage you are in your career. Well, and it, there's a certain point time-wise, right? And I guess that's different for everyone, but there's a certain point time-wise where no matter how addicted, no matter how passionate, no matter how strong or, or how much you need to grow, that it does become a job. Right. Like and maybe that's part of the, the, the burnout conversation. But there's there's a point where, uh, you know, I tell my girlfriend is like there's going to be a point where you get tired of working like like you get tired of working on Iron Man. Right. <laughs> like, you know, the, the job that everybody else wants, there's going to be a day where you have to go to work and be like, oh, man, I have to work on that. And it's interesting to me, you know, as you're talking to other artists, they're like, man, I'm too busy. Do you find as an older artist that that is where the past starts to separate between the guys that are going to go on to build themselves into a bigger brand to, to develop IPs and the guys who are going to focus more on family and, and go the other direction? I mean, I guess you know, that's just life. But do you see a separation, you know, at, at 45 years old or at, at your age? Um, do you see a separation happening now where? the people you've worked with for 10 years are now kind of choosing their own path and going off. And some of them are recharging and, and just now realizing like, this is my new beginning. What's that experience like? Yeah, that's the funny because I, I think a lot of us are around the same age. Um, I'm, I'm in my late forties. So a lot of people, a lot of the artists that I've talked to that, you know, that are around the same age, we're all kind of going through the same things, which is I've been doing this a long time. Like, I need to move towards what I want. And everybody has a different answer for that. But I think that some people are gung ho and willing and some people aren't. And uh, because, you know, it's a safety blanket. Uh, so we're trying to help each other out, you know, like at times, you know, I sometimes I get really scared. Oh, I am with, you know, I say I'm going to take a break and then some job comes, you know, even if it's not a good job. And then I'm like, oh, I'll take it. You know, and then Eddie will give me crap, you know, and just say, hey, look, you, you know, what, what's, what's going on here? You know, you said you were going to take a month off to do your stuff. <laughs> right. so what happened with that? You know, and they'll call me out and I'm like, oh, crap. OK, OK, yeah. OK, let me finish this. So then I, it really reminds me to do that. But I think at this at, at our stage, we just have to help each other kind of move past sort of doing art just to make money. Because. Right. Right. You know, you can really just do art to make money. And right. and and I'm sure most people are doing that. And you can do that in, you know, not very, uh, you, you know, you can do it in a way where it, it's just like, it's just, it's just a job. But I think at some point you have to ask yourself, where's the next evolution? How can I revive this and really chase after the projects that I want, the people I want to work with, you know, you know, meaning directors or, or, or production designers and move, you know, for my, at my stage right now, I'm trying to go part project oriented or PD oriented, meaning I will, for the production designers, I will look at who I really want to work with, who I can learn from and take my stuff to the next level. I want to choose those people or the projects that are, that I love that are going to push me to the next level. So, you know, those are the things that are really important to me right now. Right. But I'm, I've, you know, I'm, I'm really willing to try new things and I'm really willing to try new software. Uh, you know, I'm willing to learn new techniques, um, maybe a little bit more than most people, because I'm just, you know, I'm always listening to talks, you know, anybody talks, I'm listening to it, you know, any, Anybody, you know, because I, if you can pick up one good thing, that's great. That's incredible, you know? So that's kind of how I'm doing my, you know, sort of future. And, and I'm actually working on a whole, I wouldn't say a new style, but a new way of telling, telling stories, a whole new, uh, you know, pipeline to, so that I can tell my stories easier for the way I work. Um, 
and that's all changing now. Yeah. Where's the challenge for you? Meaning that you, you, at this point in your career, like you said, you have that ability to think about who you want to work with and then make those decisions and choices. Where is the the 18 year old in you that's that's nervous that that is a little bit worried that's excited you know and, and when I say nervous not nervous necessarily in a negative way but just like this is something that's new this is something I don't know much about this is something I'm excited about learning but I'm not sure if I'm gonna be good at it, it you know um, do you force yourself into that situation or do well you I mean this, so this situation? is so this is where you know quite funny you know this is where the table tennis comes in so okay. I picked up table tennis when I was 40. Uh, I got to about 46, I think, and then I made the national team and I went to the Pan, Pan American Games to, to, to play. Cool. So what, what, what that's taught me, though, is that I went from nothing to almost sort of a semi-professional level. So what that means is, you know, if I can put in time, I can get there. I wasn't the most talented table tennis player but I just really enjoyed it and I practiced like hell. So that's why I'm not afraid anymore now because when I look at software, it's just software. You put enough time, you know, I may not be the smartest guy, you know, like maybe I don't pick up software as fast as a, you know, 18 year old, but I know that if I put in the time, I'll pick it up. So, you know, I don't ever get worried about stuff like that. It's just, a, the only thing I get worried about is, you know, every day, you know, like how am I gonna pay the mortgage? Um, stuff, you know, which, you know, that's just part of my nature. You know, I tend to like, okay, I got bills to pay, you know, but you know, you it's already a have a realistic concern though. When, you know, that's one of the things that, you know, I was actually told at, at, at a company I worked for, you know, don't mention how much people make. And I'm like, that's crazy. Of course I'm going to mention how much people make. And you know what, I'm, I'm going to mention the salary they should be at because I'm not going to tell a student, Hey, you know, take that job at $46,000 when you get out of school so that you're paying back the 60, 70, $80,000 student loan. Like you're going to live in a city that you're paying 25, 35, $4,500 a month just to live. And the reality is, is that if you don't figure out how to put together the right portfolio, if you don't figure out how to present your skills and negotiate, you're going to be put in a position where those stresses become real stresses that distract you from being able to do quality. Yeah, art. I mean, that's totally true because, I mean, then that's one of the things for people who are a little bit more on their path and more mature, uh, you know, that have responsibilities. I mean, if you're a 20 some year old, you don't, you know, oh, fine, I'll just You'll make it work. In, I will live in some guy's, you know, room, you know, so I, that's fine. You know, like they, they, their footprint is relatively small. But when it comes to people like us or like me, uh, you know, when you, you know, I don't have a kid, but when you have kids and a family, then, you, you know, you may not be as willing to make that change into like, say, from environments to characters, because you're like, hey, maybe I don't get the same rate. I can't not do that. Yeah. Right. You know? That's a good so point. but my thing is believe in yourself enough to know that you can it's going to be tough for a little bit because what, what that's going to be is you working on your own time on a set of images that show people you can do it. But sometimes you, you have to take the punch in the gut, right? Like, you yeah, know, yeah. that's what no, you have to. Like, it's not even sometimes it's all the time because nobody's going to give you a job. If you're an environment, you know, environment artist and you say you want to do characters, nobody's going to give you character work unless you put in the time to really, really work on it and get something viable you know, so that your clients can say, oh, you can do that too. That's awesome. Uh, yeah, let's do that. You know, so, but that's happened to me on uh, multiple films, you know, where, uh, you know, they will need, you know, just happens. They need some kind of character thing. And I'm like, Hey, I can take a stab for you. And they well, give I you a day. You better prove yourself in that day. <laughs> I think, I think that's important too, because, you know, we do these talks and we're, we're putting this information out there. And a lot of it is, you know, in regards to CG society and, and the type of work and type of stuff that you should put in your portfolio. But, you know, what you're talking about really hits a, a key, which is it's the work that you put yourself into. It's the work you do outside the studio. It's the work that you do when you're getting that punch in the gut to take a risk that gets you a lot of respect in a portfolio, meaning that, if you take a class and I look at your portfolio and I can tell that this is a homework assignment, as good as it is, I can tell it's a homework assignment. I'm going to be really happy and excited to see your good work and that you're working hard. 
but it would be better if I could tell that it was from a homework assignment, but you took the time to take that class, do the homework, and then redo that assignment on your own, right? Like, don't show me the, the same thing that I'm going to see from Not always, class. because then it just looks like you completed the assignment. I mean, I want to see how you think. I want to see right. who you are. You know, like, like this piece you have up by Eddie. I mean, that's what Eddie does. And, you know, that's how he thinks. That's who he is. This is what he loves. He can do images like this all the time. I mean, it's just one of those things where it's like, uh, uh, you know, you it's have really to. It's really hard to tell what's 3D in here. I don't know if this is 3D, but I'm looking at this thing and I'm like, he's really doing a good job of making this look kind of loose and quick. Yeah, I mean, it's but it's a cool image. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. a, there's thought and it's a cool image. And I think in the end, you have to be comfortable enough to say, I make this is, you know, this is my upbringing and background, all of the things that make me who I am, and then I'm going to express it uh, through all these techniques out into the world. And, you know, people will resonate with that, you know, but what they won't resonate with this, like you said, you know, oh, I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm doing this homework piece. I'm just going to copy that. I'm going to do that. You know, they can tell. And then it's doesn't really speak to anybody because nobody really is. It's not from the heart. You know what I mean? Right, right. And I really like what you say. I mean, I'm, I'm a big proponent of when I look at a portfolio, I want to see your life in there, whether that's hobbies, what you do as far as, you know, sports, exports, music. Um, you know, I, when, when I find out, you know, my, a, a good friend, Charlie Wynn plays the violin and I'm like, I didn't know that. That's awesome. Like you're doing superheroes yeah. when you play violin. And it's like, now I want to hear you play violin. <laughs> right? like, yeah. Uh, but I mean, you know, like a lot of those things will, 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 will bring itself to, you know, to what you can do in your next painting. I mean, it, like, it's like if you play the violin, you know, instead of having a guy who's standing looking at a rock, which most people do, just like even, <laughs> you know, just like you just had that girl who was, you know, in that sci-fi uh, right. sort of thing. I mean, what if it was a girl with a violin? It'd be so much more interesting just to it's look at something or is asking. Yeah, it's just, it's just, it's just, why is this person playing? A it's just more interesting. And it's part of you. Like on some of my images, I'll have certain disability things in there uh, that a lot of people may, may or may not realize, but uh, you know, that's part of who I am. And I want, you know, to put that out there and it makes, the, the, the image is more interesting. So, you know, I'm always doing, you know, like, uh, uh, you know, like my new project is just, just a suit, this guy, you know, with the stuff in his back. I mean, that's because I'm spinal cord injured. So I'm like, well, what if you had these things that, you know, and there's a whole story about this guy and what he does. So, you know, I'm, I'm writing that now, but it's, you know, it's based off of who I am as a person um, and everything comes into play. So don't be afraid to put yourself in it. Um, that's, I guess that's what I'm trying to say. Yeah, I, th I think that's really important. I mean, as you mentioned, you know, one of the things that we also discussed before was just, you know, reference and, and, you know, I, I, I always, <laughs> I always have, uh, conversations with my girlfriend where I'll walk up and she's having trouble with something that she's battling for like the past 40 minutes. And I go, I don't have to tell you what the problem is. You know what the problem is. And I, and I have this feeling with most artists that, you know, whether you're posting online for a crit, whether you're posting online for your gallery or to show what you've done, I feel like most of us know exactly what we're trying to hide in an image. We know exactly where our mm -hmm. weakness is. And we and, and all it really takes is better reference or taking the time to, to be responsible to look at. But we put it out there anyways. And so when I walk up to her, I'll say, your problem is, I guarantee you, you're going to show me your reference. It's going to be a 300 pixel, like blurred out didn't take more than five minutes to pull it off of Google images. And, and instead of going back and finding better reference, you're, you're referencing that and she'll, she'll turn red and laugh and then she'll pull it up and it'll be like a 400 pixel image. Right. Yeah. And, no, I mean, that's true. <laughs> uh, you know, that I mean, definitely is... doesn't define your art, but it is one of those things where you have to take the time at every level of your art to, to not be, and the lazy is a bad word, but to not be reckless. No, right? I mean, you know, I I agree to a certain point because I think of, I am always of a proponent, you know, to reference, right? If you don't have reference, you have no clue what it looks like. And I'm always, that, that goes without saying. Um, but I think sometimes for, especially for younger students, and, you know, and this is not just for younger students. Like I told you, I just took that 
Craig Mullins class twice. And I'll tell you, some of that stuff went way over my head. And then the third time, which is I, I just did his recorded stuff and, I, and I'm like, oh, I get it now. And I've taught enough to, to tell you that, you know, a lot of times these students are, you know, that at that, you know, sometimes you just can't see beyond what you can't see at that point. Right. And you just time, you know, and you have to just go, you know what? I've done all the reference. I've tried my best. That's the best you can do at that moment. You have to be happy with that. Always try to keep improving, but you can't be so frustrated. Like I can't paint like that. Well, it takes time. Right. And a lot of theories take time to seep in. And I mean, I've done this for like 20 plus years and I'm still going, oh, I can't get that. And I'm like, okay, I'll try again. And I'll try again and I'll try again. I'll try maybe listening to another point of view, another person teach the same thing. Maybe I resonate better with that. Okay, I'll try that. You know, you just try a lot of different things, but don't be too frustrated. Even if you have the right reference, doesn't mean you can see what's in there. That's what you're supposed to see. Well, your, so, class, yeah. your class with Craig is important because, you know, for me, I tell people all the time, I was like, look, you know, I did over a hundred DVDs at Gnome, and if it just came down to watching a video, if it just came down to having an event and taking notes, I would be the most amazing artist on the planet because I've worked with everyone. But I was like, the problem is, is if you don't do the homework daily, if you don't, you know, if you don't take the time that, uh, or the passion daily, and if you're not getting feedback from somebody with an eye, like, you know, you're taking a class from Craig, and I imagine, you know, a big part of taking that class from Craig is not only just to learn his techniques or see his quote unquote videos, but to have him have a conversation with you to get you to develop your eye, to be able to, to, to clue you in on those things that you don't know about. And that, that's, that's an element these days I'm, I'm happy with doing live mentorships. And you know, it sounds like a commercial talk about that, but it is that thing where you need that group of friends. It, sometimes it's not even a teacher. It's a group of friends or a group of students that you can trust that are a little bit ahead of you you know, or, you know, maybe you're a little bit ahead of them and in the effort to get them to understand you're better understanding those, those uh, philosophies and techniques yourself, because you now have to break it down to teach someone else. Um, was that a component for you? Even, you know, with 20 years in the industry, do you, do you feel like you still need those mentors to be able to kind of point things to you? Or is that something you're comfortable well, I mean, with? That, that was sort of why I took um, Craig's class because I respected him. Um, right. And and I wanted, you know, it was a one on one. So, you know, he was, you know, that's why I like the format of that. Uh, honestly, I don't have a lot of time for taking classes, but, you know, the truth yeah, is yeah. I will make as much time as I can to take the right class. Right. Um, and but I mean, by taking a class, you know, and I, I want to make sure this is clear that whoever can take the class, some people, OK, I, I've got a thousand bucks here. I can do that. Or I've got this money that. You know, if you're going to take a class, you better be really serious about it. You better be I mean, I was serious. Good. I was seriously enough that I took time off for it. Wow. Um, yeah. And so this is not like, oh, I'm just doing the weekend. No, I took time off. And then every day I was practicing. I was practicing yeah. every day and I was trying to understand the theories because, I, you know, I started as a photographer. So, Did you really? yeah, I mean, I went to Art Center for photography. That's me. And then I went for architecture after that. And, uh, you know, it's just, that's not, I'm not a painter by nature. I'm an image creator now. I mean, that's more like what I am because I want to make images that are compelling. But it took me a long time to come to grips with that because I was like, well, I got to make the sexy paintings because I'm, I'm what they call an illustrator in the, in, in the industry. <laughs> So, yeah. you know, I, I got to I got to paint, you know, I got to I got to brushstroke the crap out of this. Um, but in the end, no, you know, that's not what really speaks to me. I mean, what really speaks to me is making a cool image that makes you think. Yeah. However you get there, I don't care. Really doesn't matter. I mean, you could photo bash, you can 3D photo bash, you can just paint. I don't care. As long as it creates that mood and image, that's that's all that matters to me. And when I look at images, if that mood is created, I couldn't care less how it was made. But, you know, there is a lot of people who are very like, oh, brushstrokes, you know, like, oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. 
I remember, you know, a little bit off topic from the environment stuff, but I remember Daniel Simon using the Photoshop tool to basically make his 3D look like 2D. And just, I remember talking to four or five students in the class and saying, what, what is it specifically that you like about Daniel Simon's work so much? And literally three students at once are like, he's just amazing with markers and I don't understand how he gets his great hands, right? Yeah. Um, but it's like, no, he's throwing those <laughs> sketch lines on after, man. He's, you know, he's, he's, and it's yeah. just exciting. Working. And, and a lot of people don't realize that, you know, what we do, a lot of it is really design. Right. It's not, you know, the, you know, however you technique you use to finish the image. Design. Right. Yeah. It, you know, it's not really illustration because, you know, when you work on a film, I'm sorry to say it's really design. Yeah. You know, the, you're, you have to design this thing that can be built into a set. Yeah. OK. You have to illustrate the design, but that's just to show what the design is. Ultimately, you have no design. You have nothing to illustrate. So that's the problem, you know, and, and I think uh, you have to really uh, be aware of that. A lot of people, I mean, I, I see on the chat, that you, you know, Kalina uh, is saying, you know, like uh, knowing, you know, what classes, you know, to take. That, that's a really good question because, you know, there is so much out there. Right. I mean, it's almost like too much information out there. But I would, I, I always say, just start with what you really like and go, you know, if you really like environments, then go with the ones that are really going to teach you the basics of that certain thing, you know? I, um, I think, I think a lot of stuff is good. Like even the gum runs are amazing, but I think the important part with all of that too is to have a game plan because as you mentioned before, you can just get hungry and go buy every gum road and go buy two classes in a term and, and then you end up doing half ass on all of them. So I think coming up with yeah, I mean, I, I think gum helps. roads are are good for like brush ups uh, yeah. and to sort of remind you of certain things. But you know, I'm a big proponent of go to a class setting so that you know you have other students. Your peers are so important. It's not just yeah, your teaching peers. Career, so. You know, like some if one of your peers are kicking ass, it's going to make you kick ass. Uh, yeah. The instructor. You know, hopefully, you know, when you look at an instructor and you look at the body of work, do you like that? If you like that, then they're going to teach you that. If you yeah. don't like that, then don't don't take that class. Don't just but do I, it because of the name. Do it because right. you like, you know, like if you're looking at Nathan Falks and you don't really dig that style and you like what Andre is doing, Andre Wallen, they're, they're two different people with two different techniques. You can't. Just take not Nathan Falk's thing and then want to do photorealistic stuff. It's just not going to be the same. So right. choose the right person with the body of work you enjoy. Well, and I because, want to give props yeah. to, you know, I want to give props to John and James. I want to give props to, to Bobby. But I think, you know, myself, um, you know, there's definitely there's definitely people that are responsible with the people that are recruiting for teaching. I know that you and I might teach together later this year. And you know, I'm very selective. If you look at the classes that I have, I have four or five classes a term typically max because I'm really looking at being responsible with who I bring in. Like I want to be in that class. I want to learn something from that teacher. And if I've taught with them before and helped them with the curriculum, then I feel confident on that side. Cause that, that's not exactly what you're talking about, but, but there is that level too of, you know, everybody is deciding to teach nowadays. And you can pick up things from everyone, but if you go in without a plan for yourself, and like you said, you can take two amazing teacher. Nathan is an amazing teacher and Andre, and he's an amazing teacher, but what are you doing with your plan? Right? Like, like you exactly. said, like, <laughs> if, you've got some, if you've got somewhere you want to get to, it's not just the money that you're investing. Maybe you have the money and money is not a concern. Um, but time is such a critical thing. Yeah, time and the, you know, that leads to frustration. If you don't get what you want because you chose the wrong class, then you're going to be frustrated and maybe quit. Yeah, like, I mean, I've got people that have taken Dice to Sumi's class and then they're coming in trying to take, you know, a Transformer class, <laughs> like, you know, and it's like, well, you know, are you doing this as a hobbyist? Do you just want to have fun? Because if so, that's cool. Like, I'm not against people like, hey, take classes for fun. Like, just enjoy it. Like, that should be a part of it too. But... I'd rather talk you out of a class or I've, I've, I've referred people yeah. to brainstorm before, you know, I've got, I've had two or three of my own things and I'll refer somebody to a different school because I'll be like, I, I just did it just term. Somebody came to me and um, you know, their anatomy was like, you know, on a scale of one to 10, their, their anatomy was like an eight. And I was like, look, 
you don't need another class that's going to work on hyperrealism and anatomy. You need to work on costume design. And, you know, if I've got a class that's offering costume design, then, hey, I'll present that to you. But if I think somebody else at a different school has a class on costume designs better, like that's what you should be paying attention to if you're serious about wanting to do it for the industry. Because I get the reward not from referring you to somebody else's business and, and doing damage to my own. But I get the reward three years later when you're out there in the community, when you're out there in the industry and I need a, a, a concept artist for this director over here that I'm helping out or I need somebody to come back and teach with me. I know that I took the responsible and pushed you into that direction. I, and, you know, I'm a little preachy on that just because I spend time on that because I do see a lot of reckless stuff out there. And I don't mean to people individually doing things on Gumroad. I think, you know, as an artist, do everything you can to build income, to give yourself the time to be creative. Um, you know. Yeah, but I, you know, I also really feel that you know nowadays, you know, a lot of people are looking to online um, for that solution. But I still think, you know, for for some of the younger artists, you know, like if you can go to a physical school, like art center, or you know, I mean, obviously not to be in debt, right? But I mean, somewhere where you can actually get a bunch of, you know, it's a school setting. You know, it really does help. But I mean. You know, not everybody can do that. So of course, no, then no, they have their yeah. here. Yeah. I spent ten years at Noman, and I definitely see the value of a brick and mortar. I'm self-educated, but I definitely see the advantage of brick and mortar. I don't mean necessarily the complete advantage of our online because I think they both have their strengths. You know, you're going to find the instructor that does exactly what you want, and if you've done your research, you can get them online. And if you get them online, it's going to be half the price. And if you yeah. are, if you're disciplined and intelligent enough, you can put together your own curriculum and cut a year and 20 or 30,000 off. But having said that, if you go to a brick and mortar, you don't know exactly what you want. You know, I think I might like to do concept art. I think I might like to do animation. Yeah. I think I might like to do modeling. Those type of artists, I feel like are much better suited to go to a brick and mortar because you're going to go into a school like Noman. True. Yeah. That's going to throw you into rigging and you yeah, might yeah, no, that that's true. love rigging, right? Um, not saying that you're not going to be a successful modeler or concept artist coming out of there, but it's just saying that, you know, take a look at what kind of artists are you? Are you somebody that has the time and the need for a brick and mortar? Or are you somebody that has the discipline and the ability to do online? And, you know, both ideally the best of students I see are the ones that are putting themselves in school and then they're filling in the gaps or they're choosing their own curriculum out of school and only taking certain classes and filling those gaps with something outside of it because they paid attention and said, okay, this school is really good for these things and I need these things. But if I'm going to go into a design field, I better get some design classes, right? <laughs> yeah, and that, that's probably the one biggest things I have to, uh, to crit uh, criticize on, you know, some of the newer talent or even, you know, some people have who have been working is that uh, their design skills are not really up to par because they keep thinking it's an illustration job. Right, right. Um, and that that's the one problem because they paint the hell out of it, but then where's the design? And that's they they frustrate themselves because they're like, well, I never learned design. I went to school for illustration. So it's, it's a little you know, easier nowadays, but for there's a good three four year gap where I would get environment guys. I remember um, Wes Ball um, sending me over a few artist that he was considering for a project. And he just said, you know, what's your opinion on these guys? And I said, here's the thing, we've got, we've got a lot of artists now that are doing these like really painterly environments. And you know, it, it's this really cool environment that looks like shrapnel, right? And, and you can pull it off because of 3D now. But at a certain point it's like, well, if he's gonna be on film, you know, you're gonna build that bridge and you're gonna build that entrance way to that architecture. And I can't tell if that's underwater. I can't tell if that's, you know, on a moon base. And I was like, that is some of the problem solving. And as an artist, you, you can't start with the limitations, but I think some of the stuff I'm not seeing on CG Society and ArtStation and places like that is that problem solving design of like, well, what is that architecture? Yeah, it looks cool. It looks moody. It looks awesome. But if I hand that to a modeling department, if I hand that to set builders, are they going to know what to do with it? And, you know, that next level is something I would like to see more of in portfolios. If you show me the loose, I love seeing that loose and reckless. But then, you know, on one of the 10 images in your portfolio, show me where you took something loose and turned it into actual architecture, you know, or do a loose 3D build up on it and show me a rotation so that I can see what it looks like from a different point of view. I think James Klein was the one that said to me, you know, 60% of the stuff that I've done for film has been set extensions. And he's like, you know, how often do you think I've seen a set extension in, in a portfolio for film? 
<laughs> yeah, like, and, you know, it's like honestly, you would ask me that if it was never, yeah. right? <laughs> no, I mean, you know, I, I just think, you know, mo most importantly is if you have that critical thinking for design. Uh, right. And you've learned, you know, all the problem solving things and you're a good illustrator, you're going to be fine. Yeah, you really are going to be fine. Uh, and then it's just a matter of, OK, how do I put my portfolio out? How do I talk to the right people? How do I get my stuff out there? You know that, you know, that's the whole next social media game that you have to play because you want people to see your work. Put it out there. You yeah. Know, you put it out there you, enough, you, know. you, Eddie Del Rio, um, you know, we just talked to Coley. Um, and you and I have had that conversation, just the, the unfortunate fact that social network and marketing is now such a role for artists. I mean, you can fight that and say that it's not, but you're going to be fighting against your income. You're going to be fighting against, you know, unexpected opportunity. You're going to be fighting. Yeah. I mean, and, and, and to, to say, you know, quite simply, you know, like, I want to clarify that it's not like, okay, put everything, you know, your sketch on your coffee, you know, your napkin online. Right. I'm saying put good stuff. Like if you don't have, if it's not there, don't put it up, have a bar for yourself. And this is one of my biggest critiques on most people is like, where's your bar? You look at that. I'll ask a lot of people, look at your stuff. Do you think it's good? Oh yeah. Uh, I'm like, could this be better? Yeah. Yeah what could be better and they'll tell you three things and i'm like well why didn't you fix it before you put it up well you know kind of just felt like putting i was tired getting tired of it you know you have to have a bar for yourself to say okay this is good enough this is where i want it to be okay it's not there yet so i'm going to spend another day on it and then i'll put it out there it's it's going to create so much more buzz and people are going to realize it's a really strong image you know and Make sure you share stuff that, you know, like if you don't want to do characters, don't show character work. I mean, that's the thing that I've seen lately the most. A lot of people come and say, hey, you know, can you look at my stuff? And, you know, I always try to give people as much time as I can. And I'll tell you, more than half of these people are, are showing me stuff they don't even want to do. And I'm yeah. just like, are you kidding me? This you, All you showed me, all you've shown here is heads. And you want to do environments? You have one environment in your portfolio. Like, why would I hire you for that? I would hire you to do heads if I had to. <laughs> so, you know, a lot of people don't realize and they don't know, you know why am I not being looked at? And I'm like, well, because don't put 10 heads, put one good head, awesome head. Do that. You know, right. give me that one image because and, and I'll just share with you a, a real a quick story. Uh, you know, I was, sure. you know, I told you I was down in L.A. last week. And right. it was all based on these couple images that I had done. Uh, and somebody had seen it uh, online somewhere and decided that that's the kind of images that they liked. And they invited me down to meet with these directors and watch their film and give feedback and talk about a sequel. So now, if I didn't put those images up there, I would this would have never happened. So I think... But, but it's not like just, oh, I'm just going to put any old crap. I mean, for me, I put everything I put up there is I think about it. I, I look at my peers. I look at how, you know, is this what I think it should be? If it's not, I'll take another week before I do. I'll put it up because I have done that time and time again. I won't put something up there if it's not ready to be put up. So I think make sure, you know, don't just do a dump of stuff. Put your best right. stuff out there. And and if you ever, ever, ever wonder if your stuff is good enough and you don't know, take your favorite artist, put it next to his. It, does right. it stand out? If it doesn't, you're not there. It's that simple. Well, you mentioned a lot of good stuff. I mean, one, don't dump your images because, you know, with as fast as things move, you've got to be strategic. You've got to be like your own corporation and say, I'm going to roll out or I'm going to release this image this week or this image on Tuesday and this image on Thursday. Like you want to put yourself scattered because, you know, if, if you drop everything and everything ends up in this forum and this, this role right here, then a few minutes later that day, you're going to be buried. But if you drop something here and you've got something here and you've got something here and people are checking this forum two, three times a week, you got the chance to stand out. I think it may have been you that I had a conversation with, but I said, you know, with ArtStation and, and with CG Society and, and so many of the gallery sites, 
we make it easy for you to put everything into an album, whether that's Facebook, any any site that you know these days is image hosting gives you the ability to put everything in an album. But if you put 20 images into an album and this is your thumbnail, then when I come to try to find you, I got to find this one spot. I would take advantage of CG Society. I would take advantage of a portfolio site and I would put every image in an individual image and I would take real estate and territory because of now course. you've got a huge patch to be found. So like, you just have to be a little bit smarter than the next guy. <laughs> You'd have to be. And that no, might I, be yeah, I, I mean, right? I, I, I do all that for sure, but you know, ultimately, uh, have the good work so that you can actually do that oh yeah and that's that's just it too like you know with the advice i'm giving it can make it seem like hey just be reckless and free but yeah like you know if it's not ready don't put it out i mean uh you know fosto used to i used to give fosto credit because i said you know when you were at blizzard the thing that you did really really well is you took your personal art and you would like work on one piece for like you know six months and then that piece three years later would still hold up I was like, you took the time to put one really strong image out there. And yeah, I was like, I mean, it's some, some of my image, I mean, some of the images that I love are from years ago. I mean, you know, n none of this, like, you know, I don't ever want to see how long it took you to do something on your description. <laughs> because if you tell me, right. hey, you know, this is a two hour speed painting. Well, what's that supposed to mean? Like that you or, can paint it two hours minutes, and that's, right? yeah, oh, this is a 10 minute spit paint. You know, that's awesome. Hey, if it's a good image, it's a good image. I don't care if you did 10 minutes or 10 days. Good yeah, image is good. You, it doesn't if you matter. Get there, right? That's the thing. If you get there, like it's almost like you, you have both ends of the spectrum where somebody's saying, I took 10 minutes and I did this. And it's like, oh, okay, awesome. Or somebody's saying, I took two weeks and do it. But like at the end of the day, like, why are you telling me? Are you telling me it's a justification because you're not confident in it? Or are you telling me it's a justification? Well, I think a lot of people better? want they want to have a little pat on the back that, you know, they're good. But, you know, right. being good means, you know, you're good. And, you know, what is good anyway is all subjective. I mean, you know, what someone's good is another person's bad. It doesn't matter. I think ultimately you just have to love your work. And, right. be, you know, I'll tell you another really quick thing. I, I was on a job. Uh, and uh, you know the production designer asked me hey how long did it take for you to create this image and at that time it was just a you know that image he was referring to was a black and white sketch that took me two right. hours so he goes oh all right cool okay so i guess uh um yeah you're on the project great uh so i get on the project first day he goes well you said two hours right so oh, eight man. hour day um i guess uh, you know like three to four image of that quality then and wow. you know, people are gonna hold you to that. And yeah, that took two hours, but normally, you know, because that was a personal piece and I didn't really have to answer to anybody. I just kind of did it out of my head. But now right. you've got a brief and you gotta do four versions that are of that quality. I mean, and it wasn't low quality. And I was just like, oh crap, you know, what, you know, what did I paint myself into? So it's not about speed, but in right. the end it can bite you in the ass because you're all like, yeah, two hours. <laughs> like, I'm not saying lie, but I'm just saying, like, make sure you make that caveat. If someone um, asks you how long it takes, you say, well, it, well, or you could explain, hey, it's a right. personal piece. I didn't have to fulfill a brief. It took me, you know, X amount of time. But, you know, that's, you know, like if hopefully the production designer understands artists. But if they don't, they're going to hold you to it. And then they're going to be like, what, are you not working the hours here? What's going on? You know, like. You have to be, uh, you know, I think you just have to be careful. Uh, but so for me, I never say, well, I never put in, you know, how long it take, you know, because for me, it really can be anything from, you know, like a short, an hour to 10 days. I don't know. Sometimes so, I, I can't tell, you know. Yeah. So you're on freelance now. Where, you know, where are you going next or what are you working on next that um, you want to share? Well, I mean, I'm just trying to go for some of the projects and designers that I really respect. So that's my next thing, uh, trying to get on to the projects that I uh, I really like and work with people I really like. So that's kind of my next thing uh, immediately. Uh, but for a little further out is to, to uh, rework my portfolio and what I do uh, and uh, finish writing the story and maybe illustrate some of that. That's cool. Well, thanks for spending so much time. If you want, um, is there anything we missed covering there? But if 
if we miss anything. I think we'll cover about. like a lot of stuff. I, <laughs> I do. I mean, you, you talked a lot. Thank you. I mean, you talked a lot, but the thing is you said a lot, right? Like you shared a lot and that's, that's what's important. And, and man, you know, I can't tell you how grateful I am to have these opportunities, not for just for other people, but for myself. Like I always enjoy catching up with artists. I always enjoy hearing where artists are on their path. And, um, you know, that's something that brings me a lot of joy. If you have time, I'd love to be able to jump into the gallery and, and choose. Sure. Uh, yeah, yeah, sure. I mean, I don't know if anybody did anybody leave a link for anything on the chat. I, I'm not sure. I see Artur has one up. Is that for an image, Artur? Let's just click on it and find out. Oh, OK. No, that's actually for the recording. So apparently you're talking to somebody else. Oh, okay. um, so anybody here that has a link that wants us to take a look, um, go ahead and link that now. Uh, do you want me to switch over to your screen, Emmanuel, so you can? No, I mean, why don't gallery? you drive? It's fine. Yeah, okay. I mean, I can okay. just look at it with you. So, and you know, I keep going through the top end of this. Obviously, as we go down, it gets into older stuff. Which gallery uh, is this anyway? So this is the CG Society Gallery. There's a lot of confusion out there. We took over two years ago this site, and you know, it's been tough. It's a 15-year-old site that, over time, the previous programmers didn't really fix things; they just patched things. So, you know, it was one of those things where, you know, first of all, coming into a 15 year old gallery in the time and period of social networks is interesting. But the biggest tech thing for us to been able to tackle is the technical stuff. And we finally have a really great team now from CG Plus that's merging with us. And uh, it's going to make uploaders and all that stuff nicer. But a lot of people didn't realize is that there's still a big distinction between CG Society and CG Talk, right? So this is the forum, it's a CG Talk. The gallery is actually connect to both. So, you know, this is latest entries, feature 2D, feature 3D, CG awards, okay. community awards. And if you if you search this way, you get an individual view where you can just kind of scroll through the latest things that are uploaded. And if you go to the gallery over here, you get kind of the art wall that people are used to. And this has been like this for years. Um, you know, uh, all the sites for the most part use this because there really isn't a lot of tech out there right now that's better or faster than this. Um, but you can go up here to the filter and you can look through categories, CG awards, community awards. And, you know, again, I'm just listing this for people checking the gallery out for the first time. Latest mm. is just the submissions. Latest is every single artist that submits anything to CG Society goes into latest. Feature 2D is images that are liked by moderators, images that are featured um, that we take a look at and say, okay, this is a step above just hobby. Like you're clearly trying to put some hours in using some software. Uh, you're going to move into feature 2D or feature 3D. Community awards are the awards chosen by the artists that come in and select the images they like by views and likes. And then CD awards are images that we feel are exceptional images and we want to kind of acknowledge that for you. Uh, I see. So okay. when you come in, sorry, that's a long, <laughs> long little bit of your time. But, um, you know, most of the time we just take a look at the feature 2D and feature 3D. And we also look at the latest entries. Um, I go through every image pretty much on a nightly basis. So, you know, no matter who you are, what level, I still want to see um, who's putting stuff in. Because even if your stuff is really immature at this point and really rough, on a monthly basis, if you're continuing to submit, I want to see if there's growth there. And if I see you trying or you're struggling, I'll find a way to, to acknowledge that or give you some help. So I don't want people to think that we're looking at highlighting only the best of the best. I'm trying to get away from that mentality. Because as you know, in this industry, yeah, we all want to work with amazing artists, but we want to work with somebody we can open up a chat with and, you know, work with five years from now. And it's just fun and cool, you know, and that doesn't mean they're stronger or weaker. It's just you build these relationships and um, especially in film. Right. Uh, and you don't have to do that. Like you can get by by just being an amazing badass. But most of the amazing badasses in the industry that I know, um, you know, it, there gets a point where they're busy in life and, and they don't have a lot of time and things like that. So, you know, have people around you that you get along with and have fun with, and that plays a big role. Um, yeah. I don't know, you know, I assume that that's a part of why you want to work on projects is, is not just the director, not just the designer, but there's probably people that you either worked with a long time ago or want to work with that you appreciate that, you know, are yeah, it always makes it more fun when you're on a project together and, and you, you know, you're kind of just, uh, it's like Blade Runner, you know, and George was on it and I was on it and it was just, just fun because, you know, it's like, uh, you're working with people you like and, 
you can talk about the project and you trust their opinions and you can bring your artwork to a higher level. It's really fun, yeah. So let's take a look at some feature 2D real quick. And there's gonna be sure. a little bit of a delay, about two or three seconds. So if you see something, just holler it out to me. And yeah, uh, I mean, just you can go ahead and pick because for me, you know, I, I it, 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 these are hard things to do because the, the truth of it is, uh, uh, you know, you don't really understand the context or what kind of feedback they want. Um, so, you know, it's just going to be purely talking about an image, you know, right. how to sort of break it down uh, a little bit. But, you know, this is unfortunate sometimes because you don't know the, why they made it, you know, or where they want to be. <laughs> well, and that's that's a good question, though. Like even even that question itself is what are some of the things that an artist can do with their imagery to to help you I think there's a couple couple links to, on the CG Society links in the chat now okay. that I, I look um so over here here we go Claudio and our buddy Mr. Sin and these are going to take us to their portfolios All right, so this is Claudio's. Which image do you want to take a look at here? Any of these or anything specific? Or well, just actually, I can talk about the portfolio in general. Well, I mean, you know, I, I, what I do like is that I can tell right away um, what they wanted, what they want to do. So it's going to be more props, sci-fi props and guns and, uh, you know, hardware. So that's great. I really like that because I, I don't even need to click in and I can already tell that that's what they want to do. So that's really, really important. Um, so let's see here. I mean, I, I think for me first, first, you know, you already hit the, all, all the marks of like making sure people know what you want to do. Like you, you didn't have this and then maybe a character and then a car and then the environment. So this is exactly what I'm talking about when you should be really focused. There's not too many images. I mean, I, I'm, a, I'm not a big fan of a portfolio with tons of images. Um, I'm, I'm of the mindset that, well, you know, you should have 12, you know, on the site like this, 12 to 20, but I mean, like a lot of these things, like I, I like the only thing I don't like, if you go back to that image, you were just on yeah, engine parts. So I'm not quite sure what this is and how it fits into the bigger picture, um, to me, uh, I'm looking at some kind of a part, uh, but if I was a guy who wants to hire you, uh, I would want to see what context is being used for. Why did you design this? Are you really solving a problem? Uh, because it's easy just to say, well, I'm going to throw in uh, a nice 3D render of something as opposed to, hey, I really thought about how this works and this is for that. Ah, okay. You know, that's, you know, if I was a 3D, I would be looking for that, you know, aside from obviously the nice rendering, I would need that. You know, what do you think? Or am I talking to myself? Sorry, I was muted there. I was talking to yeah. you. Uh, <laughs> sorry. I was like, whoa, this is really quiet. <laughs> uh, one of the questions I was just going to say is like, you know, if you have something like this, right, you know, what are some of the keys? Like to me, you know, obviously taking it, to me, this is like sculpture where, Okay, great. You showed me really good first forms. Now you need to show me secondary forms, or you show me really good secondary forms. Now you show me third forms. And what I mean by that is that, you know, if there's a graphic on here, like maybe it's just a label that that's going to signify something. You know, with Avatar, Ben Proctor did an amazing job of of going into those those uh, facilities and and having like red tubes for steam, blue tubes for oil, and there's like a schematic on the wall, and there's like all those graphics that say like, well, yeah, these are all tubes, but each of these tubes has a purpose. So you, you won't necessarily have an engine part that might have something on it, but if you've got a serial number or you've got a manufacturer or you got something like that, at least gives us one more step towards understanding what what's going on there. So th that would be my advice is to say like, you know, put this in the context of like, great, it's an engine part, but it's an engine part for what? Like, is this, yeah. is, is this in a, important spare part to so warp drive is this from star trek mm -hmm. is this from you know mad max like you know give me something right um to to to, to point me somewhere yeah. 
So I agree with you 100. percent Absolutely. Uh, let's go over to Marcens and Marcin. I, I I apologize if I'm murdering your name. I know we talk all the time, but we talk in text. So you unfortunately have to read my Travis knees, and I am going to mispronounce your name. I think. Um, <laughs> <laughs> let's take a look at a few of his environments. I'll pop up a few of these, and while you're taking a look. And if there's any one specifically you want me to click on, Emmanuel, just let me know. Or no, if you no, want to look at character stuff, we can look at character stuff as well. See, this is where I think, you know, like say some of the character stuff, he has a whole bunch of them. Um, and I would say that, uh, you know, I would pare it down, you know. I mean, you have so many in there that is it really just you know like a lot of them are sketches and thoughts and ideas and stuff and you know i'm worth i'm talking portfolio specific right i mean if right, someone right. came to here and wanted to hire you there's so much stuff i'm not sure what to look at um and i think you and need you to fit, what uh, department do we put you in right yeah as an artist you need to put your best foot forward and tell people hey i'm an environments guy here's my stuff uh here's the best 10 12 pieces and then you know and i can also do some of these things but you know that's a side note but when i look at that i'm just like oh my goodness there's so much stuff i, I don't know where to start um you know you got thumbnails and you got all this stuff um so yeah yeah if you go back to that like sketch uh, that you were just at the black and white sketch uh that one it's like i wouldn't necessarily put that over you know, because it's your exploratory sketches. It's for your ideas. If I look at it, I'm not quite sure what's going on. So it's going to hurt you more than it's going to help you. You don't have to show everything. Uh, so for this one, I would say, well, it's for yourself. You know, my sketchbook is for myself. It's not the most beautiful thing in the world at all. Uh, but I don't post it because I feel like that's for me, you know, for me to discover. Uh, right. Unless this is part of your process and you want to show in a page everything, then maybe. Right. Um, yeah. Well, and, and along with that, like, you know, that is where albums in these portfolios do help is that if you do put something into an album, you put sketches or personal, like at least you give us some sign, but putting it all together gets confusing. And it is interesting because Claudio mentioned the, the artist we just critiqued a year on that we decided to choose a piece that he did years ago. And, and this is one of my biggest things with artists. Yeah, is that, then take it down. You know, yeah. yeah, if, if it's, and, and you know, I'm not saying I'm correct on this. I'm saying this is my opinion. Like even when David and I talked, David brought up a good point, which is sometimes it's good even as a student to have something that's a few years old because it might be a trend or a style that pops up. And, you know, the default I give people is that, you know, on the, before you're an established artist, having something that's more than nine months old or more than a year old is, is hopefully something that is actually pretty bad compared to what you're doing now. Like, you know, if you're at that beginning stages of being a student, you know, nine months ago is three terms ago. And, you know, I'd much rather see what you're working on now. Um, and, and there's a value to seeing older stuff because then I can see your growth, but there's a danger in having something like if you got something that's three years old, mm. it's, it better be from a film or yeah, a project. I mean, but I mean, truthfully, I don't want to see, if I'm there to hire you, I'm not there to see your growth. I'm there to yeah. hire you to do the job. So I want to see your best work, period. Right, right. Like, there's no, that. I mean, you know, growth is great. I mean, you know, like if some mentor wants to see it, but I mean, if I'm there to hire you, well, I want to see your best work and only your best work. I mean, I've taken my old pieces and reworked it five years later because I have a better understanding of light and color and how I want to work that piece. I have done that. And I actually was just doing that today. Um, I, you have to, because you look at it and you cringe, right? Right. You're just right. like, Oh my God, what the hell is wrong with that? And, and, <laughs> yeah. and I'm not trying to be pessimistic and say that like you, you're never going to do anything in your career. You can't be proud of five years later. Oh, what I'm trying to focus on, hopefully people get the right idea. Cause we can I have this thing of, I've been, presenting and teaching and standing in front of people on a microphone for so long that I get this lecture voice that I hate, right? Like, it's just like, oh, you have to do it this way, or you need to do it this way, or this is what's going to help you. And, you know, hopefully people understand that I'm not that, I'm not super judgmental. What I'm trying to do is just give you the best opportunity from my perspective. And you should not take that and go make changes, but go ask somebody you respect or go ask somebody you do. And so when I'm looking at stuff like this, and I say like, I don't think you should have old work out there. Like, you know, only show me your best stuff. It's like, well, because I'm going through a hundred portfolios and, and 
I know that if you show me something that's old or disinteresting, or I can tell it's from two years ago, the recruiter side of me, the art department side of me is going to just throw that to the side and go to the next guy that understands to only show me their best. Sure. Right? I mean, I, and, and <laughs> there's one thing to be clear though, uh, yeah. old, uh, I, 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 maybe I would rephrase personally, uh, right. is not that don't show old work, just don't show bad work. Because, <laughs> that's 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 a better that's a better description because old work can be awesome can be like you could have hit something really awesome right you got to keep it in there i mean you can make some changes to freshen it up but you know whatever you feel is right but then don't throw away good old stuff because there's something that's are really good like even some of craig mullins's 20 year old paintings are freaking awesome you know yeah, like and i i have select few but i get your point because it's like well you know you, hopefully you would improve after a certain amount of time to where maybe you had a really good idea then maybe repaint it maybe you fresh or, it up or, or the conversation we had which is is absolutely valid which is you know it could be ron cobb and if it's good design or if it's sid mead and it's good design like you know i talk about old work it's like well then what about yeah, the entire yeah, variable design is good design yeah <laughs> Good design is good design. So, you know, if you put the thought into it, you push it as far as you can take it. What, what I'm really talking about is, is that have you grown and have you matured? You know, was that the best design? Is that representative yeah, yeah. of your design IQ now? Right. And, and that also helps talk about the conversation of like learning new software and learning new stuff. It's like the software is always going to evolve. It's going to get faster to be competitive and to survive. They're going to have to make it easier on us. But the one thing that you really need to invest in yourself in, whether it's classes, whether it, it's just having a hobby in real life or photography, is you got to get good at good, good design. You have to have whatever, but even if you're people that animate, I've had a conversation with an animator before. It's like, I'm an animator. I don't need to worry about good design. And I'm like, of course you do. <laughs> I was like, I was yeah, like, I mean, good, composition good is design. Yeah. Composition. Yeah. And, you know, Right. So I mean, like the, the page you have up right now is actually a good example of. Um, so what is the design? I, I'm not quite sure the design of this city, the design of the buildings. Uh, and I would like to see, you know, something like that, a little bit more uh, thought put into, you know, what is this? Because when I look at it, I'm not quite getting a sense of what kind of city it is. Right. I, I get that there's a lot of pointy buildings I, or the one on top. I don't, I'm not quite sure, you know, there, there's just a lot of stuff being thrown in or as pull opposed this architecture to off or pull this, like these little levers holding this up. That might be a cool thing to pull over here and design for me and show me that like you can throw it into an image, but then like, I, I might not hire you as an environment designer, but if you start pulling off some of these support systems and these architectural elements, like I might hire you to do just that, right? Like, <laughs> yeah, I mean, because architecture is one of those things where people, I think a lot of people will just think, well, you know, I can just, you know, it's the city, I can just put some buildings there and there and there, but, you know, they're not taking into, you know, account, you know, city planning. They're not kind of putting into account, you know, what about historical buildings, you know, because sci-fi cities always nowadays have like, oh my God, everything is just like 500 stories tall. And I used to do that. But when you start having more sensitivity, then it's different, you know, and, and you have to really think about what story you're trying to tell, you know, is this city supposed to be very oppressive? Is it supposed to be very happy? You know, what, what is it, you know, and should be able to see it all in that image really. Um, so I, I mean, I think it's really important um, to sort of take a step back and not necessarily always use all the techniques and photo bashing and all that and really just sit down and start from design. What is like, say that image right there, I mean, you know, uh, of that sort of ancient city uh, or, you know, I, I mean, it's a photo bash, just got, but you know, there's something about it that I feel like, hey, um, I, I can kind of believe it. There's some things that would change, right? There's some things that would change, but I, I think it's it's intriguing and it's it's consistently that a kind of architecture that kind of can work. Right. Um, and, you know, I mean, there are other issues with it, but you know, I think, you know, seeing the potential in it. Uh, it's just that the previous architecture stuff was just a little bit, uh, you know, like you had to start a little bit more grounded, I think, and really try to solve a problem instead of just, oh, okay, I'm gonna just put in a whole bunch of stuff, you know? I love the loose stuff. I'm a big fan of loose painterly stuff, but at this point in time too, it's, it's almost like podcasts, right? Where I feel like the, 
um, two, three hour podcasts are, are making a big comeback right now because we spent, you know, seven years with two minute and three minute clips. And it's actually nice to have a deeper conversation or, or you know, to get into more detail. And I, I'm ready for that with some of the art too. Like I, I'm a fan and my preference is for loose and painterly. And, you know, I love speed paints. But at the same time, when I look at something like this, and this is his personal taste, like I, you can't force your opinion on another artist, but using this as an example, this is a great piece of, like you said, just, okay, this is great. This is something I'd like to see you keep to yourself and keep working on, or put this in a sketchbook thread where this is the idea. And then now show me what 20 more hours on this piece, you know, who you are putting 20 more hours into this piece, not to render the life out of it, but just show me where you can take it. Like you've got the idea and you, you yeah, I mean, the, the, the thing is a lot of people have the, I uh, have the creativity and the idea. Um, they're right. just not quite showing it yet. And this is like, you know, the, 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 ult, the perfect storm is when you have the ultimate ideas and you have the technique to back it up. That's when you become, you'll blow up. I mean, that's just a right. fact, you know? And like, if this guy said, Hey, you know, I'm going to take this, I'm going to develop it. Like you said, maybe, you know, maybe try some 3D so that, you know, he, he, he can really work out the light and the perspective, you know, uh, maybe let me look at some, you know, how, how things work receding in atmospheric perspective because it's not quite working yet. You know, things like that, you know, and slowly uh, but surely uh, this idea can, you know, become something really cool, you know. Um, right. So I, I just, but, you know, it, 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 a successful artist is a perfect storm of all of those things. And that's, cool. you know, that's, that's what we're all trying to, you know, trying to create, you know. Well, man, you gave us you gave us an hour and a half today. Thank you so much for the time. Um, the, we've got one last question, which I, I can jump in on. You can give your opinion too, which is: Does an online portfolio such as CGS do I need to keep it simple? Doesn't matter if I delete most of my work or posting frequently. Um, you can lose some followers and presence. Uh, you know, if if you're doing this for followers and presence, you have to have that these days. But there's also, uh, you know. Who, who are your followers? Are your followers, are you chasing Instagram? Because Instagram is going to give you 300 likes, even if 200 of those people only like your stuff because they like a Marvel movie and they're not even artists. Um, you know, that does matter if you have a product outside of the industry, meaning that if you're working on a book, you're working on the story, you've got a 3D model that you're going to do 3D prints of, then that fan base on Instagram is absolutely relevant. But if your intention is to get a job inside of, digital domain or Weta or ILM or, you know, uh, frame store, you know, are you going to be using that demographic as a demographic that drives your artistic decisions? It, it, it might not be as smart. So, you know, with a CGS portfolio, I say, you know, upload only your best work, keep it the freshest work you have. You guys have the advantage. There's not a lot of sites, but there is CG society. There is art station. There's DeviantArt. Don't dismiss DeviantArt. You never know where your opportunities are going to come from. There are defense contractors. There are people that are photographers, all kinds of people in DeviantArt that you don't expect to be there that have never checked out CGS. And, you know, it doesn't hurt you to have two or three pieces there. It doesn't hurt you to have two or three pieces of CG Society and, two, you know, your entire portfolio on ArtStation Pro. You know, be strategic. It's all free branding. It's all free marketing space. Like a banner on these sites can cost you two, three grand and you're able to post your art for free. So be intelligent with it, have a strategy to it. Um, don't worry about losing followers by deleting all the art. As a matter of fact, that would probably make me pay attention to your portfolio more because if there was something I like and it disappeared and you're constantly adding things, then it's a living site. There's a life to it that makes me want to check back. I can't tell you how many professional art portfolios are among the most boring because they very rarely ever change. <laughs> like, 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 you know, there might be the same 15 images for four years straight. I can't tell you when I go to the, the portfolio sites and I browse the front page, how many like really amazing images there are, but then you start looking at the dates and there's a couple pieces that are like six, seven years old and they're still pretty good. But it's like, that's a testament to the artist to have something that still survives, especially if it's 3D that long. But, um, you know, having, having a, good curation of your portfolio in itself drives traffic to you. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I think I, I, I agree with that. And I also just want to say like, you know, you can only do the best you can at this moment, you know, up, up, update, whatever you think you need to, 
that represents your best work, keep that bar high. So if that means cutting it down to six images, but it's your absolute best six, you have much better chance of getting hired. Forget followers because you can never predict who's going to follow you, what, you know, what that's going to do. It isn't, it, you know, I think all you can do is put the best things out there, but you can't live for other people. I mean, you can't live for your followers. You have to live for yourself. I mean, and then you're, you know, whatever, you know, you have the best art out there, the, the people are going to come. You, you can't, you know, you can't live your life just going, oh my God, followers, I got to have more, you know, like they'll, they'll, it'll be fine. I, I dangerously, I dangerously lose hundreds and hundreds of friends a year on Facebook. Um, I do because my purpose for being on Facebook is to build and support you know, the network and, and the industries that I'm building, but it, more than anything, the core of who I am is to help artists. And the best way that I can help artists is by putting your imagery out there. If I see something that I respect, if I keep my personal bar high for the art that I choose to share, and I share your work on a consistent basis, or I put your work out there and share it, hopefully the idea is that that's doing you a favor. And, you know, I have a bunch of friends that are like, man, you share like five posts a day on Facebook. And it's like, yeah, you should probably either turn me off or delete me because like, that's what my Facebook is for. My Facebook is to put other people out there. So like, I have no fear of, of losing followers. If you have a goal, like if you know what your Facebook, if you know what your social network is for, then you can get rid of that fear as well. And more than anything, you know, followers are fighting kind of the golden rule of doing art anyways, I think, which is like murder your darlings. Like if you're concerned about people hitting that like button, then you're going to build an insecurity into your art that's going to be detrimental when you work for a studio. Yeah, and, and make sure that, if, you know, if you want to post sketches and work in progresses, you know, make an album for that or put yeah. it in the forums, you know, make sure it's clearly delineated. So when someone goes, you know, when a professional wants to go to hire somebody, they're, they're going there, they go, okay, that's a folder for sketches, I get it, and here are the finished works. But if you put them all together, nobody knows what, nobody's going to want to decipher what is what, you know, because any recruiter is going to have like not even a minute to look at your portfolio. And if you make it just that much more confusing, like, I don't know what, then people are going to look. Cause I've been, I've been recruited and I've been on the recruiting side and I can tell you, I mean, you know, you got hundreds to look at how, how are you going to have time? So make it clear, just absolutely clear. Awesome. Uh, Emmanuel, thank you so much, man. Um, really yeah, cool. It's my honor, man. Thank you for having me. Yeah, I'm looking forward to future conversations with you and, and future opportunities. Um, for you guys, definitely take a look at his work. Um, if it feels like we're beating you up, if it feels like we're like, hey, new users, new users, there's all kinds of brilliant artists that are coming up. And as a matter of fact, they drive us, right? Like those, those artists coming up and working hard, like we're here as the older generation, hopefully not telling you the way it is or how it's done. Like you guys have your own way of doing it. You're bringing lessons for us to learn as well. And we're not hearing that conversation as much right now. And I'll make sure to get those younger users in to have that voice stand out. So please, when you're listening, just make sure that we're really excited about all of the art, the amount of quality in the past five years, illustration, artistic ability is what motivates us to jump in and give back and be like, hey, you guys are trying. We want to give you a hand and, and give you our opinion will help you. And that's just a opinion. So, you know, take that opinion, do whatever you want with it. And uh, hopefully it helps. So thank you so much for, for industry established artists like yourself, Emmanuel. And for you guys, join up on Facebook at CG Society Meetup so you can take a look. Eddie Del Rio is going to join us tomorrow. I've never met Eddie and I've, I've only had one or two textual conversation. So I'm really excited. It's rare that I get to meet somebody new that's been in the industry for a long time. And so I'm really interested in picking yeah, his brain. Gonna be his work. He's going to be great. Yeah. And so um, really, really happy. Anything to leave with uh, Emmanuel for these guys? No, just, you know, like, I, you know, like you said, I'm a super straight shooter. So uh, if, you know, if anything rubbed the wrong way, uh, I apologize in advance, but uh, uh, you know, I, I have to give it straight. So, and that's kind of me, you know, <laughs> and that's what um, these are for. So I'll take the, I, I do agree with you. There's so many great people, uh, you know, and artists popping up that it's, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm always just amazed, uh, you know, to see the new generation and how, what they're bringing to the table. So I can't wait to see more, you know, and that's why, I mean, I also really like, you know, I like this because, you know, we're also just trying to help, you know, 
Um, and, uh, you know, just best of luck to everybody. <laughs> Right on. Well, thank you so much, guys. And, it, and thank you for those of you that keep showing up. Um, if you want to take the time to give us a hand, uh, CD Society is putting a new platform together. It will be released here in a few months to be, make things easier on you and to be much more effective. But if you can help share, whether it be our classes or just go on the forum yourself and create a sketchbook thread and offer help to another artist, sometimes that help is not necessarily telling them what to do, but just being there to hang out with them and to talk about art yourself. Um, I think that that's a big deal. So please share that and, uh, you know, continue the kind of positive vibes of, you know, moving towards this constructive criticism that might seem hard, but is going to really push people to grow. So yeah, thank you. I can't so wait to see new work. Okay. All right. Take care, everyone. We'll talk right. soon. Take Thanks. Care. Bye. Bye.